we find out why some solar storms are actually good for emergency communications. And a new flare player rotates into view off of the sun's east limb, and boy, it looks fighting mad. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity is actually declining a bit this week, mainly because regions 24, 34, 36, and 37 are rotating off of the west limb. These have actually combined to bring us a, a kind of a one-two punch in a solar storm that we thought was going to give us some aurora, but it actually turned out to be a bit of a fizzle. I'll talk about that in a minute. Meanwhile, while they're rotating and we're saying goodbye to them, we actually have a new player that we've been watching on the backside, and you can kind of see it off the east limb now. It's firing and spitting and just angry. I mean, this thing is rotating and it, where it's not even in full view yet and it's kind of really beginning to freak us out a little bit so this is pretty cool and meanwhile we actually have another filament that looks like it might have just lifted off and given us a uh, partially earth directed solar storm but we'll have to give you an update about that in a little while Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see the last time we had an M-Class flare was back around the 18th. Since then, we've been kind of hovering just below the seafloor with a few pops and whistles here, here and there. We had that one eruptive flare you can see right there. That was that solar storm fizzle I was talking about. But since then, we've really kind of hovered right below the seafloor until about the 27th when things started to ramp back up. And that activity will continue to ramp up as this new region rotates into view. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see we've really not had that much going on since that huge solar storm back in early October. There's only been a few brief instances where we've popped up over storm level, mainly because of some high-speed wind. And then in about October 25th, the, that solar storm fizzle hit, and look what happened. Everything just dropped right off the map. Everything got very, very quiet, and that's because the solar storm was configured the wrong way to create aurora, but it actually quieted everything down, so it was perfect condition for the amateur radio operators, which was great timing, all things considered, because of that hurricane in Mexico. So it kept the ham bands clear, and I'm sure you operators absolutely enjoyed it, but don't get too spoiled because activity is beginning to ramp back up again. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what I want you to notice are two things. First, I want you to notice that dark equatorial coronal hole. That, that thing is rotating off and actually into view at Earth right now, and it might be bringing us some fast wind, maybe starting later in this week. But the second thing is look at this active region. This big bright thing, it is firing off solar storms. It is flaring. I even looked in the stereo data and it's given us a particle radiation storm and this thing is angry and it is rotating into earth view that's the region that it seems to be farting and spitting stuff off the east limb with we were looking at it earlier and if it continues to give us the show that it's been giving us on the backside we are in for a stellar week returning to the disk you can see regions 24 34 36 and 37 are now rotating off of the sun's west limb and we're left with regions 24 40 a dying 39 then a new one that's growing and another one in four, uh, 24 40 this whole region right here, we've got little fits and starts of, of active regions. So we're watching these because they're kind of fast growing, but they're not really doing too much for us. But pretty much all eyes are going to be on that east limb region as it rotates into view. We don't really see much yet, but that's going to be changing in the next few days. And expect your flare activity to increase. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating a slight impact from a, a weak high-speed stream that should be hitting us on the 28th and 29th. NOAA is giving us uh, about a 30% uh, chance of minor storm at high latitudes over those days. At mid-latitudes, we're only ex expecting about unsettled conditions with only about a 25% chance of active conditions over those couple days. But as we move into Halloween, things look quiet right now, but we do have that solar storm that just got launched. Launched. We don't have any details yet as to whether or not it might be partly Earth directed. If so, expect these numbers to change, especially around Halloween and into the beginning of the month. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, NOAA is only giving us about a 10% chance of an M-class flare over the coming days because right now there really aren't any uh, M-flare players on the disk itself. However, we do have that east limb region that is rotating into view, so these numbers will likely uh, increase as the week uh, continues. Meanwhile, we really don't have any threat right now for a particle radiation storm, even though we have those other regions rotating off of the west limb. They were only firing C-class flares at the time, so we're not really expecting any particle radiation storms, so we should be in the clear. 
So although we say goodbye to a few regions leaving the disk right now that actually brought us a little bit of activity, we're actually very excited as we look towards the east limb with this new flare player that looks like it's so angry. It's giving us dazzling displays already and it's not fully into view. So what this may mean is that we may have some more M-class flares on the way. We may even have some solar storms and who knows, maybe even a particle radiation storm. It's hard to tell yet. So our eyes were fixated on this region as it rotates into view and that means you amateur radio operators expect your noise floors to rise and you aurora photographers keep your fingers crossed that we might actually get some solar storms once this thing enters Earth strike zone. And also that new solar storm that just lifted off a little while ago, we don't have any information about that yet but I will keep you guys apprised to, to see whether or not this thing might be partially Earth directed. So keep your fingers crossed. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.